Alright y'all, it's about 7.30, the sun is out, we're about to embrace the McBeast method. We're about to make 10,000 putts in one day. You heard that right, 10,000 putts. If it works for a five time, why not me? Let's get it. What's up YouTube fam, Robbie C here, and y'all, do we have an exciting video ready for you today. I recently had the opportunity to hang out with someone who had the chance to know and talk with Paul Macbeth back in the 2015 to 2017 era of Paul, and in that conversation got to talk about his putting back then. The aforementioned people asked Paul how he was able to find such consistency and success in his putting. Now these people remember the details a little bit differently, but essentially Paul said to keep his putt as dialed as it was, he needed to be making anywhere from 5,000 to 10,000 putts a day. That's the detail that has some discrepancy to it, but 5,000 was the low end and 10,000 was the high end. Now I'm gonna hit you with the truth. I believe that Paul McBeth is the greatest player to ever play our sport. And if he said he was making five to 10,000 putts a day, then I straight up believe him. And taking it a step further, I would love for my game to have the success and consistency that Paul has as well. Thus the idea for this video was born. What would it take for me to awaken my inner McBeast and make 10,000 putts in one day? We needed to start by looking at some details. The sun in Birmingham Ham rises at about 6.30 a.m. and sets at 7.30 p.m. That would give me approximately 13 hours of daylight. Except if you looked up Night Owl in the dictionary, it would have a picture of me sitting there. So I knew that if I got started at 6.30 in the morning, much less putting at 6.30 in the morning, it was not going to be successful. And I wasn't looking to make 10,000 putts for the sake of making 10,000 putts. I was on the journey to becoming the next Paul McBeth. We moved the start to 8 a.m., which would give me 11 and a half hours of daylight. Although it would give me 10 and a half because I needed to go pick up my dogs and get lunch. So we're running out of daylight real fast here. To give myself a little bit of a buffer, I cut off that last 30 minutes and made it so that I was having to make a thousand putts an hour. Now a thousand putts an hour means that I needed to be making about 17 putts every minute. Thankfully, I have a huge stack of EMAC judges and two baskets. So I should be able to make the putts, pick them up, set them on top of the basket and start putting again in 60 second intervals. I have two degrees, one in philosophy and religion, neither of them being math, but the math looked like it checked out. So I thought this seems pretty doable. Let the games begin, baby. Eight o'clock on the dot. Yeah, that is. Whew. As you can see during my first round of putting, the big mistake here is that it's way easier to clean all the putters up when you actually land them inside the basket. The more you miss means the more you have to pick up, which puts more wear and tear on your body and takes more time, which we did not have a whole lot of. After a few hundred putts, my body was awake for the day and I started making more putts, but I was finding that I was more focused on putting fast rather than putting well, which caused all of my errors that I've worked really hard to suppress and get rid of in my putting form to be highlighted in a major way. I would have one round where I felt like I couldn't miss and I would have other rounds where I felt like I couldn't get the disc in the basket if I tried. And around the 1500 to 2000 mark, I could feel a lot of tension building up in my right hip as I was rocking back and forth on it throughout the entire putting process. After that many repetitions, my hand was starting to dry out, my hip hurt, and my spirits were at an all time low. So I thought it's the perfect time to go pick up the dogs and grab a quick lunch. We'd just come back from a trip and I hadn't seen my dogs in about a week. So the floofers gave me so much excitement and a good Taco Bell lunch always hits the spot. We chose Taco Bell for two primary reasons. One, because it's cheap and delicious. And two, I could hold a burrito while I was putting because I was a little behind the pace that I was looking for heading into the afternoon. After the 3500 mark, I felt like I hated myself and really questioned why I would ever subject myself to this. So I tried switching things up. I tried putting from different places, different lengths, and different styles of putts. So that way it would bring a little more joy back to it, which is a great moment to talk about something that helped me a lot during this whole process. Today's video sponsor, Dista. Dista is an easy to use putting tool that you've heard me talk about a ton here on the channel because I 100% believe that the product actually makes you a better putter as it gives you consistent feedback, letting you know what a good putt actually looks like. But a fun tool Dissot has that gets overlooked are the distance markers. You can take these markers and easily tamp them or stomp them into the ground and they give you a recognizable point that you can quickly come back to so that you know exactly what distance you're putting from at all times during your practice without having to walk it off. I loved these for breaking up the repetitiveness of trying to make 10,000 putts in a row and 
I also love that I can tamp them into the ground and not have to worry about my dogs ripping them up and chewing on them later. So if you want to check out the distance markers or grab a disc stop to try to improve your game, head over to disc.usa.com and use code RCDiscGolf at checkout to save yourself a few bucks and a few strokes. I tried to embrace that disc stop mindset throughout this whole video of it's as easy as focus, putt, and repeat. I want to say thank you again to disc stop for everything they do for disc golf and the Robbie C channel. Y'all are the best. I was trying so hard to push to that 10,000 mark and my body was just saying no to me over and over again. I had aches all the way from my toes up to my fingertips and sadly I had to realize that I wasn't getting any meaningful practice out of this anymore which meant that it was time to stop. But as someone who tries to stay adaptable at all times, no worry, I still think there are some takeaways that you guys can learn from my suffering out on the practice screen. So was I able to make 10,000 putts in one day? Honestly, no. I'm not Paul McBeth, and I truly believe that Paul could make 10,000 putts in a day because Paul makes way more putts than I do, and if you're making them, that would have made this entire process much easier. So the question that I think could save this whole video so that I didn't just suffer alone in my backyard is how does this help you? Lots of people struggle with putting confidence, and we are looking to the internet for really any solution we can find to start finding success out there on the putting green. And many people believe the solution is to just get out there and grind it out with rep after after rep after rep. But let me tell you with absolute certainty, trying to make 10,000 putts in one day is not the way to do it. You will be full of regrets. Eagle McMahon has a video about putting and he says that if you are missing more than 50% of your putts from where you're practicing from, you're not learning how to make putts, you're teaching yourself how to miss them. Because I was so focused on getting putts in, I was actually starting to ingrain some bad habits or bring back old habits that I had worked through in the past for my putting form. There is a huge difference between just getting out in your backyard or getting to a practice screen and doing putts for the sake of doing them versus meaningful practice and going through your stroke repeatedly. This exercise also really doesn't help you with any on-course application. For the sake of time, I had to grab huge stacks of putters and start sending them off to the basket. Whereas on the course, at most, I will have two extra putters in my hand if I couldn't decide between using one of my two special putters or my normal putter for that exact circumstance. Another important thing to remember is that Paul has a great putting form that is dialed and focused that he spent a a lot of time to perfect. So putting in that many reps just solidifies that exact form that he's using during that putting. I really love the tip that Josh from Overthrow gave in one of my videos a few videos back, talking about the fact that if you're struggling with something in your putting form right now, it's not best to just get out to the green and try to grind through it and throw shot after shot after shot. It might be best to just take a week or two off and most likely when you come back, you're gonna go back to your putting form that worked rather than embrace that new habit that you might have convinced yourself into. And the third and final takeaway that I I think is super important for us to remember, and I'm trying to embrace it more and more as I work with beginners and new players across the board, is that this exercise just wasn't fun. So often we can get focused on results and distances or whatever and get distracted from the fact that this is a hobby for 99% of the people that are doing it. I mean, even for me, disc golf is my number one hobby, but also helps pay the bills. So I really am trying to remind myself on a pretty constant basis, am I still having fun? If you're not having fun or not enjoying what you're doing, the odds of it being helpful for you instantly go down. I'm not saying that putting practice is always going to be the most fun experience that you've ever had, and it probably will never be as fun as going out and just playing another round. So it's up to you to find that balance between when you want to put in the work to see your game improve, which will help you enjoy the game more, and when it's worth just going out there and working with what you got and playing around. I think the best casual disc golfers live somewhere in the middle. So I'm not saying this challenge is impossible, but you'd have to be in way better shape than I am or be a way better putter than I am. I'd be curious to know though, how many of you in the comments below want to embrace this challenge and do what I'm going to deem the Macbeth 10K? Not that I'm saying you're not a runner or couldn't run the 10K, Paul. I'm like 100% confident you could, but this is just way cooler and more relevant for most of our disc golf audience. If you're currently struggling finding confidence in your putt and you're looking for that quick fix solution, I can straight up tell you that trying to putt 10,000 times in one day is not the answer. I'd even argue that putting 2,000 times in the same day is still not the answer. But my hope is that you can take a few of those quick tips at the end to your next putting practice to help you sort of start from the ground up and start finding that putting confidence once again. If you have questions about finding that putting confidence, leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to respond so that we can use this video's comment sections as a resource for future viewers. Overall, I want to say thank you for watching. If it wasn't for each and every one of you, I wouldn't have made it past a thousand putts, much less to 4,000 if I didn't know it was for each and every one of you. So with all that said, I want to say thank you for watching and I hope you have an amazing rest of the week. But for now, I'm going to leave you with 
the bird. Before we jump into that, if you're still watching and you have a connection to a manufacturer or someone that makes baskets, I would love to have a hookup with two normal baskets with normal cages so that things like this stop happening to me while I'm trying to practice my putting. I'm just saying easy opportunity for some company to have two of their baskets featured in all my future videos and posts. All right, shameless plug done. Let's get to the bird. 